Hey Meisner Makers, it's Jennifer here and it's that time again, Wednesday Workshop at 1. And we are super excited to have all of you here with us today. Um, if you're not joining us during the premiere, um, thank you for wandering by and stumbling upon this video. If this is your first Wednesday Workshop at 1, this is a an every Wednesday occurrence. Um, during our premiere presentation at one o'clock on Wednesdays, there's always somebody uh, available from our team here to answer your questions and your comments as we go through each of the projects. Following the premiere debut, you'll find all of the Wednesday workshop videos archived on our Facebook page and also on YouTube. So there are here for you to go back to for your reference. You can stop us during the presentation if you are if you decide to sew along at some point, or you just need to see a piece of the information again. So it's our goal to provide you with some technique information, some project jumping off points, um, just some things to get you moving, get you creative and inspired for this new year. And we'd really, really love to see what you're doing with any of the information that we're providing. So please go ahead and post those pictures of the projects that have that you've been inspired to create from our Wednesday workshop videos. Shoot me an email at info at MeisnerSewing.com. Just let us know what you're doing, what you'd like to see, um, what kinds of projects and techniques you are intrigued by. So for today, what we're going to be stitching is this, um, this winter pillow. This was a piece that actually came up on my personal Facebook feed from our friends at Janome. And I just thought this was the cutest pillow. I absolutely loved it. So I'm gonna show you the basics of how to get this piece started. The instructions are really, really good. The cutting information is spot on, and I found that it was very simple to work through, but sometimes it's a little easier to see a few of the techniques done in a step out. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, the one thing I did a little differently from the project inf instructions is added this pom-pom trim going around the outside edge of the pillow. In your project instructions, the way this is, put, is done, and I thought it was very clever, is once you sew the front of the pillow to the back of the pillow, you're going to bind it like you would do for a traditional quilt. So it gives you a nice little um, secure and firm edge finish. So those are a couple of different options that you have for completing the pillow itself. It would also make an adorable little uh, wall hanging piece too. And the colors that you choose are really gonna give it a different look. You know, I use a lot of um, these pastel-y, uh, jewel tony type fabrics uh, this time of year in my own home. And then the other sample that we're gonna walk through has some uh, more what I would call contemporary 1920s-ish type of a feel to it. So, you know, it doesn't take long. So you can make up multiples of these, uh, give them as gifts, have them scattered all over the house. This is the only kind of snow I have a need to see is the type that I stitch up. Winter is overrated as far as I'm concerned. Okay, so what do you need? Bare basics. We are working with this um, holiday pillows piece, and this was from the Janome blog, so we'll include a link down in our description so that you can go and um, get your pattern as well. Uh, it was a free download, so that was really nice. And it has a second pillow included as well. This one to me was a little more holiday versus winter, so we're gonna stitch through just the winter piece today. So you'll need that. Uh, you'll need small bits of fabrics, okay, as directed. Now, it calls for fat sixteenths of and fat eighths of your fabrics. Whatever you have in your stash or if you're shopping for fabric, you, know, you need basically for any of the scarf pieces um, about so much fabric. You know, you don't need a lot. You're just cutting a couple of strips across the width of the fabric. Um, so you may have some things, again, in your stash or you know, put together a handful of fabrics that you have been coveting. Um, you'll also need, I like fusible batting for this, and I used Embellish fusible, premier, uh, Premium Fusible Batting to attach the, to the back side of the pillow top once it was done. This way, it didn't require any um, quilting. Also, it gave a little bit more um, softness and body to the pillow itself versus just uh, being set inside of the pillow or set on with the pillow form on the inside. 
but in just, I like the way it looks by having that little bit of batting behind the pillow itself versus just the fabric. Uh, then the other thing that you will need is a rotary cutter, mat, and rulers. Now, if you have an AccuQuilt at home, I would definitely use it for this project. You're not gonna need uh, to cut a lot of things with your AccuQuilt cutter, but I do like the idea of doing any of my strips using the die cutter and the die cut strips. Okay, especially when we're doing some of the little skinny guys, it helps to ensure that you don't have wonky strips as you're cutting across that 45 inch width of fabric. Now getting into the AccuQuilt is really not within um, the realm of today's presentation, but if you have questions about the cutters, how they work, um, it will be featured in an upcoming Workshop Wednesday, or we're happy to answer any questions that you might have. Just email me at info, I-N-F-O, at MeisnerSewing.com. The last thing that you're going to need is a sewing machine of some kind with a quarter inch foot attached. Um, today I'm going to be using the Janome 4120. Uh, I love this machine. It's not super, super heavy. Um, it's a great portable type machine. It has a beautiful stitch package. I believe there's about 80 stitches plus several alphabets that are included. So if I'm wanting to create a quilt label or any type of a label for the project that I'm working on, I can do that easily on my Janome 4120. And it does come standard with a slide on table. So if I'm doing uh, quilt blocks, this is gonna give me some nice support. If I am not working in a cabinet, perhaps I'm at a retreat, um, for, for whatever reason, I'm not working in my own sewing space. So it just gives me a nice surface to be able to stitch my projects. Um, okay, cameraman Joel, are we ready to stitch? Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna start by cutting our fabrics according to the cutting instructions that are listed here on page one. Now you can see that I made myself little check marks and little notes as I went through. And the, the biggest tip I can give you with regard to cutting, because you are going to be cutting some very narrow strips, you're gonna be cutting some inch and a half uh, strips from your fabrics. I do prefer to give my fabric some um, starch so I'll use best press at the very beginning to make it a little crispy before I cut those skinny strips. And that's whether I'm using my AccuQuilt or whether I'm using a traditional rotary cutter. The instructions are extremely detailed, so don't get distracted as you're cutting. Your first cut, as an example, it's the instructions are gonna tell you to cut a strip the width of the fabric, and then it's going to give you the information on how to subcut. So just follow those instructions step by step by step by step and that will keep you out of trouble this is not the time to have a glass of wine while you're cutting your project ask me how i know okay once we've completed the cutting um, oh also another tip you can see my scribble here uh, i used fabric colors that were slightly different than what was suggested so this was my little cheat sheet so i knew which of my fabrics was fabric a fabric b fabric c and so on so that might be something that um, will help to keep you organized as you're creating your piece now on the next page of the instructions i kept this handy while i was stitching you can see that there are there's one two, three, four, five main segments to the pillow. And you can see them here. There's one, two, three, four, and five. The bulk of this is just straight stitching. So this is a project that um, even a beginner can be very successful with. There are a couple of tips that I'm gonna share with you for some of the straight stitching as we get down into this area where you have these very narrow strips that are gonna finish at about a half an inch, okay? So the, the key here is to be consistent as you're stitching. You do wanna use a quarter inch foot. You do wanna be very consistent with your quarter inch seams, you know, no weaving and wandering as you're stitching. Um, and you do want to press your fabrics once you have completed each segment. Now the other piece that we're gonna take a look at or the other segment are the buttons here on the snowman's belly and how these are put together. Um, those are the two pieces that I would say 
um, having some tips or some recommendations are going to make this project go even just a little bit more quickly for you. And then once you have completed each of the segments, I like to have them laid out as shown so that I know, number one, I stitched the correct pieces uh, to the correct corresponding pieces, and then I know where to join them to keep going. So once I have my five segments stitched, I'm going to sew this piece of the scarf to the snowman's belly, then I'll join it to the long piece of the scarf, I will join this last little bit of scarf, and then we'll join the strip at the top, and our pillow top will be completed. To stitch, the first thing we're going to take to the machine is this section of the scarf. Now again, these are some very narrow pieces. And if, if you look at the back, your key as you're stitching these together to know that you are maintaining an accurate seam allowance, and we'll show this at the machine, is that as you're joining your pieces, do you see how close together those raw edges are to the next section of fabric. And when you press everything, your skinny strips should be meeting in the middle. Okay, for those of you who um, don't have a lot of quilting experience, this is gonna make more sense when we show it at the machine, but this is where we're heading. This is what it should look like on the reverse side of the project. Um, also note that the way we press our seam allowances there's no true right or wrong, okay? The quilt police are not gonna show up at your house. I typically will press after I have a couple of units done so that I can create areas where I'll have intersections that meet. So what do I mean by that? Well, here we have a lot of joins, so it just makes more sense to push that seam allowance in this direction versus trying to fight all of the seam allowances to press in this direction. Okay, so here, the fabric is forcing me to make a choice. That means, as I come up this way, it kind of makes sense for these seam allowances to be pressed going up towards the top of the pillow. Now, when I get ready to join this section to this section, there will be a spot where I have two seams that are going to intersect. To make my life easy, I like to have the seam allowances going in opposite directions. Now, some of you might be looking saying, oh, that means that you have pressed your fabrics to the light side instead of to the dark side. In this case, I chose to break that quilting rule so that when I lay the fabrics together, the seam allowances are gonna create a little ridge and lock into each other so that that straight line is going to match perfectly after this is stitched and flipped back out to the outside. Okay, you can certainly do it the other way. This is going to make your life easier when you are piecing, but it is totally up to you. Then the same thing here. When I stitch these two sections together, there's a lot happening on this side of the fabric. So I would choose to press my seam towards the white. Again, right, totally contradicting that rule about pressing to the dark side. In this case, it just makes more sense. And then again, because it would have a join here, that's the other reason that my seams on this side are moving up. My seam on this side is moving down. Okay, it'll make sense as you're stitching these together. So we're gonna now move to the machine and we're going to stitch some of these skinny strips together. And then we're going to take a look at this technique that creates the little um, six-sided shape for the snowman's buttons. Are you ready, cameraman Joel? I'm ready. All right, so our machine has a quarter inch foot attached. Um, this particular quarter inch foot is the type that does have the little guide on the side. What you choose to use um, is up to you. It's going to be a matter of personal preference. Uh, if you need help in selecting the right presser foot for your machine, uh, give us a call or email me at info, I-N-F-O, at MeisnerSewing.com and we can help guide you in the right um, direction for choosing the foot that's going to be easiest for you to work with. Now, pro tip, 
This is the little uh, fringe on the scarf. I did use a white on white fabric. Now it does not matter whether you lay these down on the bed of your machine or your working surface with the right sides up or with the um, back side of the fabric up, but be consistent, especially with these white on whites uh, so that you don't end up getting all the way through your piecing and realize that you have some places where you have stitched with the wrong side of the fabric up. So I've laid all of my fabrics right side up, right side up. Now I can just quickly um, do what's called chain piecing, which means I'm gonna take my fabrics, right sides together, raw edges aligned, and I'm gonna position them just underneath the toes of the foot. And we're gonna stitch with our quarter inch seam. Now I also have my needle set to stop in the down position. This is something that I, it's a matter of personal preference, but I find that it helps to keep everything from shifting and wiggling when I get to the end of one section and I'm ready to join the next section. So by chain piecing, what I'm doing is I'm stitching the one segment and then I'm just chaining in the next segment and continuing on until I have all of the segments for this particular section completed. Now, personally, I like to work one section at a time. That way I don't have to pay such close attention to what I'm doing. And I'll stitch all the way down through. And yes, you will have one extra section left when you get to the end. And that'll be joined when we go back and join the next block of sections. And use my thread cutter at the end. Okay, so now we have this lovely little chain. I'm gonna take it to my board. So now we're gonna just snip the threads in between. And now this is one of those times where I do want to press each of these sections before we go to the machine. Now remember I said that our seam allowances are gonna press into or behind the tiny bit, the little strip, okay? So yes, this is pressing towards the light versus pressing towards the dark, but we're gonna do that to make our life a little bit easier. Okay, so with my mini press, I'm gonna simply push that piece over and then give it a little press from the other side. We don't wanna iron it, we just wanna press it. And actually at home, what I would do is I would press, then I would flip the skinny side out and then press. Remember, we're pressing, we're not ironing. We'll just do one more of these. Give it a press. Once each of these segments is done, we're going to go back to the machine and continue to join them. And then you have one, like, one leftover dark piece that goes here at the other end of the scarf segment. Okay, all right, so we're gonna go back to the machine and let's join these segments together. All right, for demonstration purposes, we're just gonna stitch a few of the scarf fringe segments together. In real life, you're going to want to join all of the segments together so that it is the correct size to fit at the bottom of the snowman scarf. Now at this point with these very narrow strips, visually, the point between the sewing line and the outside edge, your seam allowance should be about halfway between. Okay, this is gonna help you to double check yourself right away to say, yes, I have been consistent with my seam allowance. The next thing we're going to do is sew the segments together, right sides together. Now your next clue that your piecing has been accurate is this quarter inch spot. Your needle should be falling just to the outside of the raw edge of fabric. So when we take it to the machine, 
and we get ready to stitch that quarter inch. We have the raw edge of the fabric meeting at the flange. When we bring that needle down, it's going to be just to the outside of that seam allowance, that raw edge. So that when we finish stitching those segments together and we press our fabrics, they're going to join in the middle and they're going to keep that nice thin strip down through the center. You're going to keep it nice and solid and firm. So you'll continue each of those segments until you've completed the fringe section of the scarf. So the next section of the pillow front that I want to um, demonstrate the technique for you it are the three little squares that we're going to stitch together to create the snowman's buttons. Okay, So this starts with the squares, I believe they're about three inches, um, whatever size it tells you on your cutting instructions to cut them. And then there are four little tiny squares that are cut to go in each corner. Now as for the scarf fringe, I would lay all of my little white on white squares right sides up and my button squares right sides up. And what we're going to do is take the little square, flip it over so that they're right sides together, and we're going to stitch diagonally from this corner to this corner. Okay. Now if you feel more comfortable drawing a line you can draw a line with a fabric marker, a pencil, pretty much anything that you happen to have um, handy. I would recommend using something lighter colored rather than a darker color. You are going to be stitching right through that line, um, but if your sewing is off at all, you want to be sure that that line isn't going to show through your fabric. So I'm going to take it to my machine. This is a pretty short square to be stitching through, so I'm not going to worry too much about drawing those lines. Um, this is one that I can see pretty easily. But again, depending on your comfort level, you may want to mark those lines. Okay. So we're going to stitch each corner. Now, if I were at home, I would not use the foot with the flange for this particular technique. I think it's a little easier to use a foot that's completely flat. And you can do some chain piecing with this and stitch all the corners, the corresponding corners of all three buttons at once, then move on to the next corner, the next corner, and rotate those center button pieces as you go. love having that automatic thread cutter. Now also at home, you're going to want to use a thread that coordinates rather than contrasts with your fabric, but this makes it a little easier for you to see where we're going. Okay, so you're going to end up with a section that looks about like so. So now that we've gotten to this section segment or step, we're going to take our rotary, our ruler, and we are going to trim off the points of the triangles. Leaving ourselves a quarter inch seam allowance. And then we're going to press the points of the triangles out so that it creates a square. Now in this case, I do want to press my seam allowances towards the dark. The main reason for pressing them towards the dark on this particular block is that these are meant to be the buttons and the buttons would have a little more dimension. They'd be standing away from our snowman's belly in real life. 
So by pressing that seam allowance back towards the button itself, it tends to make that fabric or that section of the block look like it's popping forward. Okay, so once you have completed each of the three little squares that become the snowman's buttons, as you see here, uh, you will join those to create that center strip, right? Using the sizes of rectangles as directed on that layout page that we looked at. And then you'll join the two pieces of fabric to either side to create the belly. Once you completed that little um, fringe strip that we took a peek at, you will join it to the regular strips of fabric that we use to create the scarf. Um, and then join each of the pieces together and you're done. And it really uh, goes together pretty quickly, pretty easily. As pointed out at the beginning, there are only a few places where you have joins that intersect. And that was right here and right here. Um, you'll notice when you get ready to sew this section, these two sections together, we do have seams that are intersecting, but they're not inter they're not crisscrossing anywhere where it is critical. So if your piecing is off just a little bit, it's okay. These seam lines just come up through a scarf stripe. They don't need to match another seam. So it, it's very... Um, user-friendly, very quick and easy to put together. And then once that top is completed, you're just going to follow the directions. If you want to put it, your pillow together or construct it using that um, binding method or any other pillow construction method of your choice. So I hope that you have enjoyed this quick little winter pillow. I really love him. I think that I'm gonna keep my snowman out um, for quite some time. So thank you for joining us today. Can't wait to see pictures of your snowman. And we look forward to seeing you next week at our Wednesday workshop at one.